Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the must have resources to pass the AMC MCQ exam. This was one of the questions I had when I did it and it was also one of the questions that I get asked quite all the time from many doctors as well, what resources you need to have for this. A little bit about myself, my name is Randunu, I'm from Sri Lanka, I did my internship and then within the next, uh, six months after the internship I went through MCQ, MCQ exam passed it without much problems and then landed a job here, came here, did AMC part two and now nicely progressing towards my career goals. And when I did the AMC MCAQ exam, I did it with probably 10, no, 11 more friends as well. All of them, all of us passed this exam. And after that, all 10 of us have, 11 of us have advised many, many people, probably more than 50 as well. And all of them passed this exam as well. So. The resources that we use are quite solid. It worked for us. It's still working now and it will work in the future as well. All right. So first things first, AMC MCQ exam is an exam that test that whether you have the knowledge to work as a junior doctor in the Australian healthcare system. So please stress on the words junior doctor because People who face this exam are not always junior doctors. There would be very senior, very knowledgeable, skilled doctors, more than five years of experience. And some people are already in training pathways in their home countries as well. So, but when you're facing it, you need to face it and think at the level of a junior doctor to get the correct answers. Because if you overcomplicate things, it will be a little bit too difficult. All right. So going straight to the resources, I made a list because I have a very bad memory and I forget things. Yep. Yeah. Alrighty. Here we go. Here we go. So the first and the most important resource is the AMC MCQ handbook. Is a is a you know he has probably a quite a lot of MCQs and probably from the AMC people as well. So very high yield, very similar questions that would appear on your test as well. So you just, at least you need to do it at least two times. I think we all did it two times. And uh, the most important thing is when you do those MCQs, you need to read around them in other resources, which I'll mention as well. So you, you, because it might not be the same question that they ask, but it could definitely be from the same area. So it's, you need to know around those questions as well. So yeah. The best one and the most important one, AMC, MCQ handbook. And secondly, is the Australian GP guidelines for specific problems. So it's, it's called RACGP, Australian, Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. So these are an amazing college and amazing group of people. They have their own guidelines for common problems that they face, all right? And these guidelines are usual like articles in PDF format and those articles would be maximum two to three pages and they're in very simple language, very accurate, very informative and probably will contain all the things that you need, all the probably most of the knowledge that you need to have to face the MCQs from those areas in the MCMCQ exam. So how to find them? Simple, just Google. So let's say if you're about uh, interested about asthma, COPD or ear infections, you can just go Google ear infections management in uh, RCAGP guidelines and that will list you up, go to the college site and find those, probably download those articles and read them around. And it's very informative, very accurate. And like I said, will contain all, almost all the information that you need to face the exam. All right. And thirdly, for pediatric questions, always refer to RCH guidelines. So what's RCH? That's the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne one of the pioneer children's hospitals in the country and probably in the world as well. They have their own website and guidelines and information about all, almost all the important children's uh, diseases. So when you read them around, you probably gain all the knowledge that you need to face those ex questions. And I use it quite a lot. And I did use it when I was working in Australia as well, because it's that good, updated, accurate to the dot, very concise and in simple language as well. So RCH guidelines for pediatrics. Again, how do you find them? Put the problem, let's say uh, fluid resuscitation in children, RCH guidelines, you'll get the information that you need there. So just follow through the links. All right, so we talk about the AMC handbook. We talk about the GP guidelines, which are really nice. 
we talk about RCH guidelines. And fourthly, it's gonna be the John Murta. So John Murta is a book that is, I mean, it's called the Bible for general practitioners. It's a very big book and it, it covers almost all the aspects in medicine and it has very high yield information. But the problem is it's very long and probably most of us will be working when we do this exam. So we might not have the time to read it. I couldn't read it from car to car. I, I think I, I rarely use it, but I did read it for the things that I couldn't find information el like elsewhere. I think probably for something like uh, pain in the foot. So I mean, so they would have like different differential diagnosis and have nice high yield information about each and every problem, Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, whatever. They, they'll just say the clinical features, symptoms, treatment, investigations, and all that. So these for these problems, if you can't find information elsewhere, just uh, elsewhere as in, in RCH or have a nice GP article for that, probably might have to read around John Mert as well. All right, so those are probably the places that you can find the most information. And the next thing is, you know, you need to know what type of questions will come to this exam. So you need to be familiar with the recalls or like with an MCQ question bank. So, uh, I mean, uh, so for, for me and my friends, we, we do use the uh, M plus MCQ bank I, and some people use Amadex and I'm just mentioning some names. There are, there are many others which might be better than these as well. We use that. So, and all of, all of, all, almost all of these will have their own uh, free trials as well. So you could just do a free trial, see whether you like the interface, you like those questions, I mean, whether, and their explanations and just, you know, so work around them and then choose whatever you like, but you need to do a set of questions and the best way is through the question back. But I do know there are some questions that are circulating in social groups as well. So it's up to you, whatever the case, you need to go through the questions and when you're going through them, I suggest do not do them by yourself because you never know whether you're right or wrong. So always do with a group of people because like I said, none of you will be smarter than all of you. So like definitely like at least try to get around three to four people. We had like around 10, 11. So we, we had a nice uh, you know, night, you know, to bounce off ideas and go through questions and different approaches and really worked well for us. And I know that you have worked for many other people as well. So please do the question, study alone, but do the questions as a group so you can know what other people think and you might be able to learn more information about that as well. And the next thing I want to tell you is just be a part of the social groups as such, because I think in Facebook, there would be many, many groups or WhatsApp as such, you know, just for people who are facing. So then you will be able to be updated about the latest type of questions they might ask, latest trends or latest updates, which will be always be useful. So if we sum up what we discussed today, we said the AMC MCQ handbook, the best out of the best. We said the raw, the Australian GP guidelines for specific problems, which are really nice. We talked about RCH guidelines for pediatric based questions, which is probably the best that you, uh, probably the only thing that you'll ever need. And then we talked about John Murta to read around the questions, which you need to know about more about. And then uh, probably if you have it, I don't think anyone would have the time to read uh, read it car to car, but you know, read it, it's good. And then we talk about a question bank. There are plenty out there, do your own research, do the free trials and find the best one and be a part of the social groups that are sitting the exam in a certain time so you'll be able to be updated. So I'll come up with more videos to help you with more resources, I mean, to help you with more, you know, tips and tricks and all this stuff. So yeah, I wish you all the very best and this would be the most important resources that you need. And yeah, oh yeah, I actually forgot one thing. And there's something also that they, they commonly test is about like screening guidelines as such. So like I would say, uh, screen for cancer, things like that. So it's important to know that. I think the, 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 there's a GP, something called the GP Red Book that shows uh, uh, like a guiding tool. So read that as well. Yeah, so that's about it. Those are the most important resources that you need to face this exam. And I wish you all the very best. If you have any questions, just put on on the comments and you know, and also please subscribe and like the videos to support this channel. I'll try to come up with more things to help you along in your journey. Have a good day guys.